Hey class, this is section 5-1, Function Arithmetic. And today we're going to perform different function operations. Now in the previous section, we used a new type of function notation to make sense of expressions like f of x plus 2 and 2 times f of x for a given function f. Uh, so it's going to follow that functions should have their own forms of arithmetic. So even though I was able to add 2 to my function or multiply my function by 2, how do two separate functions interrelate? And so here are those four uh, different ways that these functions are rate, uh, relate in terms of arithmetic. So the sum of f and g denoted f plus g is defined by this formula here. So f plus g of x is take your f of x and you add it to your g of x. The difference, so f minus g of x, you're subtracting them f of x minus g of x. The product f of g so fg, or f times g of x, this is just f of x times g of x, and then the quotient, we're dividing here. Now just remember, if we're dividing two functions, there's a possibility for us to have a domain restriction, and so remember, we have to make sure that we do that. So g of x cannot equal zero. So just know that if you ever divide, we have to keep the domain in our, like, in our mind moving forward. So here's the first one. It says let f of x equal 6x squared minus 2 of x and g of x equal 3 minus 1 over x. So find f of x plus g of x. So that's the same thing, f plus g of x. It's the same of f of x plus g of x. So I'm taking the two functions and I'm adding them together. Now this is my input. My input is going to be negative 1. So I need to plug in negative 1 into my function. And so it's going to be f of negative 1 plus g of negative 1. So let's find what those are. So f of negative 1 is 6 times negative 1 squared minus 2 times negative 1. And then g of negative 1 is 3 minus 1 over negative 1. So just remember, these represent as placeholders, and I'm inputting the negative 1 into those placeholders. So now simplifying this, you're going to get 8. Simplifying this, you're going to get 4. So f of negative 1 plus g of negative 1, we're adding them together, you're going to get 12. The next one says find the domain of g minus f and then the formula for uh, g minus f of x. Now this just means mainly what is a nicer version of it. So let's do that. So remember if we're subtracting, so g minus f means I'm taking g of x and I'm subtracting it from f of x. So here's my g function minus my f function. So now cleaning that up. I distribute the negative through, so that's how I got negative x squared. Negative negative is a positive. That's how I got the 2x there. And so now rewriting it in descending order, notice I have this 1 over x. So I'm dividing by x. Well, with x you can't divide by 0, so it's an exclusion. So because x can't be 0, that's why I have an open circle here at 0, and I shaded everything here, everything here. And so this is going to be my domain from negative infinity all the way to zero, union from zero all the way to positive infinity. Now if we look at that same function here, now we have to try and find this formula. And remember I said this is like that quote unquote nicer way of looking at it. So if I'm going to try and find that formula, the fact that I have this minus one over sec, about one over x, it's kind of improper um, because it's like a remainder. And typically when we write things, we don't really write things as remainders. So I need to combine this all together. It's like going backwards. And to do that, I need to find a common denominator and everything. And so everything needs an x in the denominator. So x over x, x over x, x over x. Then cleaning things up, cleaning that up, cleaning that up, cleaning that up. Now that we notice everything is divided by x, I can write it as this in my numerator divided by x. And so I can say g minus f of x is going to be this statement here. Now, if you were able to actually simplify and reduce, do it. In this case, you can. So this one says find f times g of 2. So remember that f times g, that's the same as f of x times g of x. So I need to multiply these two together. So it's saying with 2 as my input. So 6 times 2 squared minus 2 times 2 times 3 minus 1 over 2. So now simplifying this, this is going to give me 24 minus 4. 
which is 20. And this 3 minus 1 half is going to be 2.5. So 20 times 2.5, that's going to give me 50. And so f of g of 2, or f times g of 2, equals 50. So now I have f over g of x, and find the domain of f over g of x. So if it's asking us find f over g of x, let's find that first. So it says, it says take the f function divided by the g function. So here's my f function, and divide it by my g function. So technically that's what it is, but we need to clean it up a little bit. And so a way that we can clean it up is going to be find the common denominator here, so x over x. And so this is going to give me 6x squared minus 2x over 3x minus 1 all over x. Because now that the denominators are the same, my denominator is the same, 3x minus 1 on top. And so now I could look at this expression as 6x squared minus 2x divided by 3x minus 1 over x. So now that it's division like that, I can flip the second. So I, those get flipped. And so I'm going to get 6x squared minus 2x times x over 3x minus 1. This I can factor what's in common. So I factor out a 2x. And so I'm going to get 3x minus 1 times x over 3x minus 1. The 3x minus 1's cancel out, and so I'm left with 2x squared as my result. So f over g of x equals 2x squared. But now it says find the domain. So when we're trying to find the domain, there's two things that we have to look for. One, radicals. I don't have any radicals. The second is going to be, am I dividing by any type of variable? And so looking at this statement here, I do have an x. I am dividing by x in this statement. This divided by all of this. So I have to say this 3 minus 1 over x cannot equal 0. Also, I'm dividing by x here. And so I also have to say x cannot equal 0. So this one's already can't equal 0. So I want to solve for this one. And so now I want to multiply everything by x. So I get 3x minus 1 can't equal 0. Add 1 to both sides. 3x can't equal 1. Divide both sides by 3. x can't equal 1 third. And so now looking at on a number line, open circle at 0, open circle at 1 third, and everything else is shaded. And so my domain is going to be from negative infinity to 0, union from 0 to 1 third, union from 1 third to positive infinity. And so that's going to be my domain. So to close this lesson, what did we learn today? Well, we talked about function notation, and we examined how we were able to take functions and do operations with them, like add functions together, subtract functions, divide, multiply functions and what that actually means. Now if there's anything else that we covered today, please share them in the comments. And then I want you guys to go ahead and answer these two questions here. What's another way to visualize f plus g of x? And another way to visualize f divided by g of x? So this does conclude our lesson. If you have any other questions, please leave them in the comments.